ladies and gentlemen, E3 was insane. <laughs> we got so much information today and so much gameplay and a lot of really cool things we got to see from Pokemon Sun and Moon today. Hopefully I'm putting this out on the same day that it comes out. I got home a little bit late, but uh, I'm here now to talk about a couple of the things that were revealed today. So uh, first off, I want to go through the Pokemon. So we're going to start with Majorna. We got a little more information with Majorna. We already knew its ability was called Soul Heart. I don't believe we knew what it did exactly, but now we have... Uh, I'm going to be covering a lot of these Pokemon uh, based on their competitive standpoint and what I think it means for the metagame. Uh, not so much design and things like that. Like, Majorna is cool and all, but uh, we're just going to hop right into the ability in here. And you can see it's the fourth paragraph. Uh, Majorna's ability is the Soul Heart ability, a new ability that no previous Pokemon has had. Really cool. However, it reminds me of another one, and I'll get that to that in a second. Soul Heart has the effect of raising Majorna's special attack by one each time another Pokemon in the area faints. This is a new ability, one that can be put to good use in battle. Now, yes, um, it's, it's doubles implications from the gameplay that they showed us today at A3. Uh, means that whenever your, your partner Pokemon, the uh, other Pokemon that's next to Majorna faints, then Majorna gets a plus one in special attack. However, it does not say that when you knock something out that it doesn't get it as well it just says another pokemon in the area now does that mean that it has to be in doubles or does it mean that you can uh, knock out an opposing pokemon and get a moxie boost for special attack that would be really good starting with this thing's typing right off the bat being a steel fairy as we've seen before with klefki this typing is really good klefki does have the advantage of getting magnet rise we don't know if this thing's gonna have magnet rise but Klefki is hard to take down as is. You need to hit it with a special, uh, super effective move or it doesn't take a lot of damage. And if Majorna is a legendary Klefki, it's, it's also going to be very hard to take down. The only problem is that ground and fire type moves are very abundant in OU and UU respectively. But I still think that this thing is going to be pretty good. Uh, we just have to see its move pool and things like that. But... I think it's uh, it's going to be a decently competitive Pokemon. Now, if we scroll down here, you guys didn't know these were the three Pokemon that were revealed today. We're going to start with the first one, Picky Peck. Some people are calling it Pick a Peck, but uh, we'll stick with Picky Peck. And uh, first thing I noticed right away when I saw this thing is its ability. Uh, it gets Keen Eye and Skill Link. Now, Skill Link, as we know from Pokemon like Cloyster, uh, Mega Heracross, Chinchino, there's a really cool bit of ability that makes you hit five times on multi-hitting moves that hit between two and five times. So, really cool. Also, its description, I uh, don't know exactly where it says it, but um, shots have enough strength to embed the seeds in tree trunks, as you can see right down here in the third uh, paragraph. Mention seeds, which means more than likely this thing is going to have access to bullet seed. Uh, maybe not rock blast, probably not icicle spear. But and maybe not even tail slap depending on how big its tail gets, but I'm assuming they're going to introduce a new multi hitting move that uh, is for the flying typing and what that means for the flying typing is that it's most powerful base attack uh, now become most powerful move now becomes this thing's multi hitting flying move at base 125 it breaks sashes doesn't have recoil like brave bird doesn't depend on the loss of an item like acrobatics and will probably have way higher accuracy than hurricane so this is amazing for the flying typing looking again at a competitive standpoint now this is a normal flying type we have a normal flying type almost any every generation uh, luckily fletchling actually evolved into a fire flying type uh, in talon flame last gen but this is a very common theme and uh, so is the other pokemon which is why i don't really want to get into them too much but uh, this thing is promising. It's a woodpecker Pokemon. I wasn't expecting a woodpecker to be perfectly honest, but it's uh, it seems like it's gonna do. It might do some some heavy things in uh, in OU, maybe UU. We'll see. The next Pokemon we got here is Young Goose. We got you, Young Goose, right here. The uh, first thing I, I I thought of when I saw this thing's name was, are we getting a Zan Goose pre-evolution? But obviously that's not the case. This is more like the Zigzagoon. Um, Bibberol, what's Bibberol's pre-evolution? I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> basically, those uh, the Rattatas and the uh, the Centrits of the generation. So it's your normal type that's more than likely only going to evolve once. It has an ability called Stakeout, and I haven't actually gone over this. 
I haven't read up on it, so I'm gonna check it out right now. With the stakeout ability, this Pokemon mo uh, Pokemon's moves deal twice the normal damage if any Pokemon that switch in or enter the battlefield mid-battle. So basically, it's pursuit, but it hits you. It, it, it gives your a move a times two analytic boost when something switches in. So really cool, and it gives it to all its moves as well. So you can run you can run Life Orb, uh, Stakeout basically. It's basically analytic, uh, but it deals twice the damage, which I don't think analytic does. Its other ability is Strong Jaw, which is pretty cool, as this thing, as you can see, has a pretty big jaw. I'm curious to see what it's going to evolve into. But this could be a, uh, a decently... I think the last one we had was uh, Diggersby that was pretty good, but I think this thing could be decently uh, competitive based on its abilities alone and being just standard normal is really good as well because then you're only weak to fighting so we'll see how good this thing's stats are uh, as time goes on and finally uh, finally excuse me the last Pokemon that was revealed is Grubbin it's our bug type it's our standard Caterpie of the generation it's a larva Pokemon it kind of reminds me of Larvesta and Volcarona just based on the coloring uh, the color palette of this Pokemon so we don't have too much information on it uh, until now uh, just get, get swarm which pretty much almost every bug type does uh, or a lot of them do and uh, curious to see what it's going to evolve into but it's probably gonna go larva cocoon and then we're gonna have another Vivillion slash beautifly slash butterfree so uh, not too hyped about this one I can tell you one person was a drive this guy uh, freaked out on his <laughs> on his stream when he saw this thing so uh, or during the uh, the trailer video so that, that that pretty much covers most of the Pokemon we also have we also have the uh, different forms I'm actually gonna pause it right here and I'm gonna bring that up for you guys we have the different forms of Sol Galeo some people call it Sol Galeo I prefer Sol Galio and Lunala's um, well they have different phases and we already know these Pokemon's abilities so this is not uh, an ability where if you get hit for a certain amount of damage or if you go under a certain HP amount, then you get you change into a different phase. This is more like, I would say, I would compare it to the natural, uh, natural disaster trio, Thunderous, Tornadus, and, uh, and Landorus, where they have different forms during different conditions, I guess. Uh, you can even uh, compare it to like uh, EV's evolutions uh, with Espeon and Umbreon. I'm guessing they'll have something to do with night and day but uh, not too much information on what these forms actually do I believe uh, they give like slight descriptions like basically just lore uh, I can't seem to scroll down the page but uh, yeah so we don't we really don't know what what's gonna happen when they get into these new forms so we know very little about the legendaries uh, and their implications in the game and, and what exactly they're gonna be there for so really cu curious to see and that pretty much covers everything on the Pokemon spectrum now, hopefully I'll be able to uh, bring up the clips here during, uh, during while I'm talking here, but we've got another a lot of cool gameplay mechanics that have been a long time coming, actually. And the first, uh, as you guys are hopefully seeing on your screen right now, is that we now can tap on the 2D image of the Pokemon that we are using or are against on the bottom screen and check to see if they have any stat drops or increases and this is huge because we have this in pokemon showdown we've had this for a long time and it's really cool that game freak is taking the initiative to uh to kind of i wouldn't say conform but uh, make the player experience better in regards to different platforms that people like to play on such as pokemon showdown so it's really cool that they're they're looking at the community and seeing what they like and uh, and seeing how they play, what's best for them, and they're bringing it into the game, into the uh, the main series. So, really, really cool feature right there. So, if you go for a, uh, a tail glow, or let's say your opponent gets an intimidate drop and starts intimidate uh, spamming by switching into Landorus and Manectric, you can actually check to see how much your attack is lowered, and you don't have to keep track of it. A lot of implications for league play, such as the GBA, the UCL, excuse me. Um, even the league that I'm in, the UPA, uh, eventually if we move to the uh, the main series games instead of playing on Showdown, of course, uh, that's 
it's very, very practical in that sense, and uh, really looking forward to, to actually playing the game and, and using that and using it competitively. And uh, hopefully you can 6v6 people online and get random games now. So we'll see how they uh, that, they work that into the, uh, to the online. But the next uh, clip that we're going to be looking at is right here. A lot of people, a lot of YouTubers uh, specifically, and I'm sure other people do as well, but... Uh, mostly a lot of youtubers that I've uh, seen and and come across and even are subscribed to have FFAs on their channel if you don't know what an FFA is it's a free-for-all basically you go into 2v2 mode and last man standing wins now we have battle royale which is essentially a free-for-all the mechanic is a little bit different where the first Pokemon, well, the first person to lose all their Pokemon, you come in with three. First po a person to lose all their Pokemon ends the game, and then the person with the highest HP total between all their Pokemon or the most Pokemon standing uh, comes out on top. So it's a little bit different from FFAs, because normally in, FF in FFAs you would um, you would play till the last man standing and the last Pokemon that drops. But now um, it's it's kind of cool. It's a it's a cool game mode. I'm sure people are gonna try it and use it on their channels and so on and so forth. I'm sure we're gonna see the King Nappy bust out battle royales on his channel with his friends. So um, I'm really hyped to to do it as well when I finally get my DS capture carded. So it's really cool. Another thing that once again really nice that Game Freak Game Freak took the initiative to go and look into the community and see what was going on. And draw inspiration from that. So really happy about that. Kudos to you, Game Game Freak, for for really stepping up your game on this game. I'm, I really like the way everything looks. Even the the regular battle screen at the bottom, like the fact that the four moves are on the right side now. Uh, I have a theory on that. Uh, basically, I think that Mega Evolution is still going to be a thing, and now we're going to have Burst Evolution or whatever the uh, the Rhombus is. Uh, in the titles and on the bracelet and both uh, activations I'm guessing are going to be on the left side uh, now and they're going to take up that part of the screen so really uh, really clean really nice really nice to see some gameplay from the game uh, early uh, it's really just I, there's nothing more to say about it it's just really cool so uh, glad uh, glad we got all this info today it uh, fed my uh, my thirst for more sun and moon information so i hope you guys enjoyed uh if you have any comments uh about anything that i said as far as uh, the competitive standpoint of pokemon or even the the gameplay features if there's anything that i missed uh in general let me know uh hit me up in the comments hit me up on twitter twitter's in the description uh leave a like if you want to see more videos like this i know a lot of people are on the sun and moon hype train uh, i haven't been doing many videos when we've been getting information little by little but i thought today was like a very big reveal and it was worth uh, going over so if you want to see more of these when we have big uh, information leaks like this uh, definitely subscribe uh, and uh, yeah that's about it guys thanks again for watching and ciao